We'll see some engine notes rise, a little bit of nudging forwards from a couple of the cars. It's not a great start from the TR8 on Paul. However, then of course the power comes into play and he'll drag his way clear of the field down towards turn one. The battle will be for second at the moment. It's Charlie Cope in the VW Golf who has the advantage there. Gets it stopped, gets it turned in. He is ahead of Colin Calder's Junetta as they get out of turn one and onto the rather long run now towards Clark Corner. The Cortina, we said to expect to see it around the outside. He did just that. He's up to into fourth position now, which is a brilliant start to see for that machine. However, I'm not sure he'll hold it for long. as teaming up the inside. We see the plucky little Fiat of Al Sabapti regaining a couple of positions in the twisty flowing sections of the circuit. It is Andrew Graham, who's your leader, in the green machine at the head of the field. He's got two or three car lengths advantage. It's come down a little bit at the back of the circuit as Charlie Cope has been able to manipulate his machine over the twists and turns, the hills and the bumps. But now, as we get towards the straight, Andrew Graham will deploy everything he has under the building surprise bridge for the first time of asking. It's Andrew Graham at the head of the field. Yes, uh, and a lovely uh, V8 rumble as he crosses the start finish line. Charlie Cooper can then, having survived a, a great drag race down to the first corner at the start of the race uh, against Colin Calder's Ginetta, but he's left the Ginetta behind then on, on overall lap time. And yeah, the usual thing we've seen is the the, the battle with Alistair Baptist's uh, fast cornering, slow straight line performance Fiat. The XR2 battle further back is very, very interesting. Duncan O'Neill was late on the brakes to try and gain the lead in that particular squabble, and I think he has it for now, although doesn't look very quick on the straight, and the three car comes past the boat. That's Michael Anderson. The leader is already down in towards Butchers, hits the brakes much earlier than Charlie Cope has to, and if anything, the jet so it looks as if it's struggling a little down the back of the circuit. Now, it should have the legs on the Fiat currently running in fourth, but Alistair Bapti applying the pressure, attempting to make some progress. We know how good his run out of Duffus is. It's good once again. It's only just before the bridge that the Ginetta is able to pull and regain the advantage. Yes, it's, it's quite a big advantage by the time they hit the main street. So, uh, Bapti's car just uh, bouncing and hopping as he puts the brakes on hard at uh, just at the end of the pit lane uh, slip road. It's uh, really, he stamps on that brake pedal, he gives it everything. He's got ahead of the Ginetta as they came out of the hairpin, but the Ginetta repasses him quite easily on the way down towards Clark. He is closer than he was one lap ago, however, so he might try and make this battle run and run for a few corners, because if he can get ahead before they get onto the start-finish straight, that means he's not as far behind at the hairpin, and you can start to work that advantage and to try and make the overtake stick for a couple of corners more than it did the last tight round. Your leader is still Andrew Graham. He's clear at the head of the field. He's not getting away from Charlie Cope, the two setting almost identical lap times last time through. However, they look to be doing not quite the same on this occasion. It's a good lap coming in from Andrew Graham as he attempts to lengthen the advantage. The Fiat of Alistair Bapti is closing in as usual over Duffus, and he does look a touch closer than he was one lap ago, so he's making that Fiat work for him in the corners. Fastest lap of the race, Andrew Graham, a 1 minute point three one zero purple. Yeah, he just can't quite get below the 1 minute barrier, but I tell you the car that's come alive for this race is the Lotus Excel of uh, Craig Houston. He's uh, side by side with Mario Ferrari as they exit the hairpin this time. Mario Ferrari just about to get followed up by that Lotus as they go ahead down towards Clark. Now, it is worth noting in amongst all of this, there is the XR2 battle playing out between Dunkel and Duncan O'Neill and Paul Green. Paul Green has the advantage in that one right now. Uh, just ahead of them, you'll see another Fiesta, actually, the red car, the three machine. That is not running in the XR2 class, that's in Class C. So, brilliant to see them fighting, but not for class position at this stage. The leaders already onto the pitch straight once again to complete yet another lap. It is Andrew Graham opening the advantage once more. They have eight laps to go. Yeah, Charlie Cope in second place, looking fairly safe. Colin Calder, though, if the, if the start finish line was on the exit of the hairpin, he'd be worried about whether he's going to finish third. But as it is, um, he's usually safely ahead of Alistair Bapti by the time they cross the start finish line. And uh, that manoeuvre we saw at the hairpin last time round, um, Craig Houston has managed to get his Lotus well and truly ahead now of Ferrari's Alfa Romeo. So Craig's next target 
is, uh, I think if I'm counting correctly, going to be Alistair Bakke in fourth position. It will indeed. Craig's been lapping quite well. He's about a second a lap, no, half a second a lap or so quicker than Alistair Bapti. So he's got work to do if he wants to bring the gap down, but he's got time to do it as well with seven and a half laps left on the clock for him. Here comes Alistair Bapti. He's ascending the hill right now in towards McIntyre's. He's later on the brakes, as you'd expect, than the Ginetta ahead. He's earlier on the power than the Ginetta ahead, and he carries more speed up the hill than Colin Calder can do as well. However, Colin Calder then just puts his foot down and has that extra little bit of grunt to get him over the crest first and by a slightly bigger margin, although there was a surprising amount of steering, it should be said, on the straight there from him, so <laughs> keep your eye on that one. Yeah, and Alistair Babs as well is a joy to watch when he <laughs> goes into the hairpin, the way he attacks the hairpin. You can see the car sort of skipping and dancing around under braking and things. He's absolutely on the limit of what the car will give him, and uh, that's what he's making up all the time each lap. Lap times are astonishingly quick as well, it should be said at this stage. Andrew Graham is lapping occasionally in the 59s, generally in the low one minute bar. Then Charlie Cope every lap the low 101s. Behind him, everybody's in the one minute mark again actually, so Charlie Cope being closed down. The top five all lapping around about 60 seconds, which is absolutely stunning from them. Up to the line to knock another one off is Andrew Graham. He'll have six to go this time through. Ahead of Charlie Cope, who is definitely and visually being reeled in by Colin Calder behind. This is the opposite of what we saw in the race earlier on today, but the Ginetta seems to have found something. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, Charlie Cope slowing down as he just locks uh, an inside wheel going into the hairpin briefly. Um, that golf handles so well through the hairpin, but uh, it's not enough to keep Colin Calder B. You're right, the gap is closing very quickly. Craig Houston is catching all of them uh, from behind. He's, how many laps have we got left? Has Craig Houston got enough laps to start to get into that battle as well? We've got six to go. He does have enough laps. He's able to lap almost the exact same pace as Colin Calder last time through. Both of them doing their personal best laps of the race down towards the bottom of the hill they go then. They first drop over the sh chicane, then they dip into that little trough and rise up the other side once more. The first guy is gone, but second, third, fourth, and fifth are all somewhat equidistant at this stage. The gap comes down as they run towards the straight between Charlie Cope and the Ginetta G4 of Colin Calder. Colin Calder reels him in along the pitch straight as well. Over the crest he comes, he's thinking about the move pretty soon, I reckon. Yeah, he's getting closer and closer each lap, so I think maybe one, two laps, he's going to be able to do it. He's within probably four or five car lengths as they, as they got to the apex of the hairpin. But uh, Craig Houston's managed to pass Alistair Batty this time through, and uh, despite the fact that that was Alistair's strongest part of the circuit through the hairpin, but uh, Craig Houston just swept by him, and uh, he's, uh, his next target then is going to be to try and get to the podium. Great move from Craig Houston, making progress. He's going to hope that Charlie Cope and Colin Calder ahead managed to fight each other a little bit more than had been initially planned. And that's just what's happening, actually, towards the chicane. Colin Calder pulled out. He wasn't close enough to take a, a look at the move, really, but he just wanted to show himself to the mirrors. There is a result. Charlie Cope not quite as quick as he has been on previous occasions. Colin Calder not online, so couldn't carry the speed as he would have liked. The leader comes up to start yet another lap. There's going to be some traffic on this occasion. Four left to go in this race. Yes, uh, the 66 uh, Duncan O'Neill Fiesta getting lapped exactly as they cross the timing beam. Andrew Graham, the, the leader, lapping him. Uh, Colin Calder still closing in on the back of um, Charlie Cope's Volkswagen Golf, but uh, behind them, a big lock up from the back wheels of Craig Houston's Lotus as well. Craig is really pushing, pushing, pushing to try and catch the Ginetta in front and get himself onto the overall podium. Andrew Graham has been hugely held up there by some of the traffic because there's a brilliant battle developing further down the order between Neil McGregor and Paul Green. That's an MX-5 versus an XR2 Fiesta. The pair of them were squabbling and held up Andrew Graham for the best part of a half of a lap there, which was not what Andrew Graham needed. Fortunately, his margin is big enough to deal with that. Next up into that battle is going to be Charlie Cope, who's again extended the margin over Colin Calder. Colin takes to making a mistake on this tour somewhere, which leaves him under pressure from behind, namely under pressure from Craig Houston. The pair of them reach the traffic. They'll split one one way, one the other. Then Craig Houston goes, do you know what? I think it's easier to follow through. So they go to that side of him, down into the hairpin they come. There's cars from every class everywhere. 
Yeah, this could uh, change the complexion of the issue. Craig Houston's taking the opportunity to threaten Colin Calder because Colin Calder's had to lift off for the XR2s in front. Craig Houston passes him. Colin Calder, I think, has missed a gear coming out of the, the hairpin or lost drive somehow. I think he's searching for gears and uh, slow to crawl. Alistair Barty, in fact, is probably going to catch him as well. Hand out the car for Colin Calder. He knows he's got an issue. Whatever it is, it's not going to fix itself. He's pulled across to the tarmac and then decides, you know what, it'll be onto the grass for me. He's not quite going to make it to the rally cross for Luke here. So there'll be yellow flags out. It's not in a dangerous position, but it's not in a nice position either at this stage. It is, however, one more ticked off for Craig Houston. He's lapping a couple of seconds uh, quicker than Colin Calder. He will have two laps this time through to close that gap down to Charlie Cope. The question is, is he able to do it? It's a best part of, what's that, a second and a half, two seconds with two laps to go. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a long way to go, but uh, Craig was uh, absolutely euphoric at getting a podium um, at Knock Hill earlier in the season. It was his first ever overall podium, so um, this will be the second time he's got the podium, assuming he finishes the race. Now, the thing is, can he catch Charlie Cope, and will he take the risk of trying to do overtake him when he catches him? I'm not sure there'll be too much risk because Craig Houston should be a lot quicker on the straight. Of course, the issue is you know Charlie Cope's going to send it deep on the brakes if you try to make the move on the straight. So there is always a bit of risk involved in that one when you're trying to overtake Charlie because you know he's going to come back to you. Your race leader is at the bottom of the hill dispensing with potentially the last bit of traffic you'll have to deal with before the end of this race, assuming everything goes to plan. As entering the last lap, however, and exiting McIntyre's, it is nose to tail for second place. Charlie Cope has his mirrors full with Craig Houston. The pair of them round up us now. Onto the last lap they come. They're underneath the bridge, and it is Craig Houston hounding the back of Charlie Cope. He reels him in towards the back end of the straight, but it's going to have to be a dive. Yeah, and unfortunately there's traffic in the way, so he doesn't have the track woods to play with, but he's right on the tail of the Volkswagen. They've cleared the two tail enders that were ahead of them, and he's closer than ever to Charlie Cope now, and uh, he's not losing anything on straight speed as they exit to the hairpin and accelerate down towards that right-hand turn that leads into Clark Corner. Here's the fight then. They're at Clark Corner now, and it is still Charlie Cope ahead of an ever-anxious Craig Houston. Houston was looking towards the inside at Clark, couldn't quite get there, ducked back in. They're now at the chicane. There's never an opportunity there unless you're very, very brave, of which Houston thinks better of it. The answer is going to have to be McIntyre's or the run to the line. He's not close enough on the brakes at McIntyre's. Can he get on the power that little bit earlier? Do you know what? I think he might have done. Your leader is already at the top of the hill. It is going to be a dominant performance from Andrew Graham in his TRA. It's across the line. Brilliant effort from him to take the checkered flag in the lead. Where is Charlie Cope? The answer is on his own to take the chequered flag. Where is Craig Houston gone? Well, Craig Houston did not emerge up the hill. There's a green flag waving at the start line gantry, which would suggest there's a yellow flag at the marshal's post before that, which is probably where Craig Houston is. That's a great shame for Craig, because he was so close to another podium. But he obviously chose to take the risk uh, and try and get one step further up the podium, and it hasn't, uh, hasn't worked out for him. No, not at all.